How's it going, folks? I'm Deswood Desfit, and these are the brand new Apex 2 and Apex 2 Pro from Chorus, which are the updates to the very long-standing original Apex and Apex Pro GPS sports watches. The original Apex and Apex Pro were arguably quite different watches, but these new generation Apex 2 and Apex 2 Pro share a lot more in common, but there are some key differences between these, which may make you want to choose one over the other. So in today's video, I'll be going over all the differences between these new generation Apex sports watches versus the previous generation. And of course, just like all my in-depth reviews, I'll be going over tons of detail in regards to how these actually perform for sports, testing them deep in the woods for trail running and mountain biking, out on the road for road biking, as well as through the city with plenty of tall skyscrapers to test both GPS accuracy as well as hardware accuracy. And if the information in this video does help you out at all, don't be shy about hitting that like button down below. It's a small little thing that you can do that'll help this video and the channel quite a bit, and I appreciate it. So with the original Apex and Apex Pro, those were quite different watches from one another where the original Apex had a two button configuration with one of those buttons doubling as a digital dial and it also came in two sizes. The Apex Pro came out a little bit later and this had a three button configuration but also added a touchscreen. But now with the Apex 2 and Apex 2 Pro, these are much closer siblings where both still have the sapphire lenses of their previous generation models. These both have titanium bezels with a PVD coating for scratch resistance as well as a titanium back. And now both the Apex 2 and Apex 2 Pro have touchscreens along with that three button configuration with one of those being a digital dial. But just like before, these are designed to be outdoor focused GPS sports watches built with more premium materials for increased durability. Another difference is that the new Apex 2 comes in just one size where the original Apex came in both a 42 as well as a 46 millimeter size options. The new Apex 2 basically splits the difference being a little bit over 44 millimeters. The new Apex Pro shares nearly the same dimensions as the original Apex Pro, but I found it to be just a smidge over 47 millimeters where the original is a smidge under 47 millimeters. But in addition, the new Apex 2 Pro is actually a bit thicker than the original Apex Pro. The new Apex 2 comes in three different colors. So there's a black version, a gray version, as well as this coral version, which I have for you right here. But just note that the silicon band that I have on this coral version is actually an optional accessory. All the Apex 2s and Apex 2 Pros come with a color match nylon band in the box. And then the Apex 2 Pro comes in three different colors as well. So there's a black version, a green version, and then a gray version, which is the one I have for you here today. And this is how the Apex 2 looks on my 185 millimeter circumference wrist. And there's still a good amount of silicone band to spare. And here's what the Apex 2 Pro looks like. And again, a pretty good amount of nylon strap to spare. But along with the updated sizes, both of these also come with updated displays. So the new Apex 2 shares the same 1.2 inch size display as the original 46 millimeter Apex with 240 by 240 pixels. However, now it gets a touchscreen. The new Apex 2 Pro, however, bumps up the display size to 1.3 inches from the 1.2 inches on the original Apex Pro. And along with that slightly bigger size, there's also more pixels where it has 260 by 260 pixels. And just like the original Apex Pro, it also has a touchscreen. Another thing that I noticed is that the interface has been freshened up a bit here and there and a subtle but very nice touch is that there's a bit more animation in some areas. Like here, when I go to open up the workout interface, there's actually an animation here as well as when I go back a screen. And the same thing goes for opening widgets where there's just a a nice smooth animation. And by the way, these new animations will be coming to the Vertex 2 via firmware update. Right now, the touchscreen is utilized with widgets where you can scroll through different data charts and such, and the touchscreen is also super nice to use with maps. However, they have an additional firmware update that'll be coming out at launch for both the Apex 2 as well as the Apex 2 Pro, which is what they call a full touchscreen experience where you'll be able to use the touchscreen for other areas of the interface like swiping through menus. The one thing they said about this full touchscreen experience though is that you won't be able to tap to select. The touch experience is more about swiping and scrolling. Unfortunately, Course didn't have this feature ready for me to demo for this video, but they said it should be out by launch. And this feature also will be coming to the Vertex 2 along with those animations. Another thing that I noticed is that the digital dial is a bit more sensitive now on both the Apex 2 as well as the Apex 2 Pro and doesn't require you to turn it quite as much as the previous generations. So for example, with the original Apex Pro, I had to turn the dial quite a bit before it changed the display where now with the new Apex 2 Pro, the throw is much shorter and this definitely helps with the experience with the dial. And like I was mentioning earlier, all the Apex 2 and Apex 2 Pros come with a nylon band straight out of the box. And this is kind of an interesting choice, but I kind of like this decision since these really are sports focused watches and nylon bands just tend to work a little bit better for sports where they tend to have a bit more stretch to them and they breathe quite a bit more too. They do of course hold a little bit of moisture, but I just tend to think that the benefits of nylon bands outweigh that small drawback where they may stay wet for like 20 to 30 minutes after workout. And for the quality of the nylon bands, I found Course to make some really nice bands and this new band is no different. 
different. It's super comfortable. It has a nice amount of stretch to it. The Velcro closure is super secure with five pieces of Velcro. And I think what makes it even more secure is that there seems to be this extra soft layer of fabric on the outside that the Velcro latches onto. Oh, and they also do have silicone bands too, which are available as accessories, and they do have color match options based on the color of your Apex 2 or Apex 2 Pro. Another thing new with these new Apex 2s is that both of these get longer battery life than the previous generations, with the new Apex 2 getting up to 45 hours of battery life for recording outdoor activities versus 35 hours on the original Apex using its standard GPS mode. But the new Apex 2 also comes with a new GPS chipset that can leverage all five major satellite systems, and that'll drop the battery life down to 28 hours, but you will get better accuracy in that mode. And then with the new Apex 2 Pro in its standard GPS setting gets up to 75 hours of battery life for recording outdoor activities versus 40 hours on the original Apex Pro. Again, that's in the standard GPS setting, so comparing apples to apples there, but the new Apex 2 Pro also can leverage all those five major satellite systems, and with that mode, it drops it down to 45 hours. However, the Apex 2 Pro also has a new dual frequency mode for increased GPS accuracy, like its bigger brother, the Vertex 2, where that drops it down to 25 hours. And then for standby battery life as a smartwatch, the Apex 2 gets up to 17 days and then the Apex 2 Pro gets up to 30 days. One interesting difference that I noticed though, which is not really an upgrade, is that the Apex 2 and the Apex 2 Pro are water resistant down to 5 ATM, where the original Apex and Apex Pro were rated down to 10 ATM. So they should be just fine for stuff like swimming, showering, and some very shallow snorkeling or something like that, but they may not withstand higher pressures beyond those activities. Another change with the new Apex 2 and Apex 2 Pro is that both of these have updated heart rate sensors, which are supposed to be more accurate than the previous generations. And they also have a new wear detection sensor, which may aid in that accuracy. But in terms of the actual heart rate accuracy for sports, well, we'll loop back to that a little bit later on in the video when we talk about the sports and fitness performance. But another feature that comes with these new Apexes that comes along with those new heart rate sensors is the ability to collect HRV or heart rate variability readings. And then in addition, both of these also have SpO2 sensors for measuring blood oxygen saturation levels. Both of these have barometric altimeters, they have accelerometers, a gyroscope, a compass, as well as a thermometer. And another change, and this is something unfortunately that they've actually removed, is the support for Ant Plus external sensors, where the new Apex 2 and Apex 2 Pro only support Bluetooth accessories, which is different than the original Apex and Apex Pro, where those supported both Bluetooth as well as Ant Plus external accessories. And since the Vertex 2 also didn't support Ant Plus accessories, I'm guessing that ship has kind of sailed. However, a pretty big upgrade with the Apex 2 and the Apex 2 Pro is that both of these get much more storage than the previous generations, where the Apex 2 now gets eight gigabytes of storage, and the Apex 2 Pro gets gets 32 gigabytes, and with that storage, both of these have support for global offline landscape and topo maps. Now, although both of these do have maps, one important thing to note here is that these maps don't contain any labels for streets or trails. So you can see roads and trails pretty clearly with either of these, but they lack any sort of context. And this is kind of a big difference with these maps compared with some other competitors' devices. And using maps as well as navigation with the touchscreen along with the digital crown is a pretty great experience. I just love to see some labels on the roads and trails. Now, since there is a difference in storage between these two, there will be a difference in terms of how many maps you can load onto the watches at one given time. So with the Apex 2 Pro, since it has 32 gigabytes, you can load up nearly all the maps that Chorus has available. With the standard Apex 2, since it only has eight gigabytes of storage, you can load up any individual region, actually multiple regions if they're smaller, but you will have to pick and choose a lot more carefully which maps you have loaded onto the device at one given time. So for those of you who may not travel much outside of your region, probably not a big deal, but if you do tend to travel quite a bit, the larger storage of the Apex 2 Pro will come in a bit handy. Another thing that you can do though with that internal storage is that you can store music on the watches themselves for offline listening using a pair of Bluetooth headphones. And these are gonna be your own MP3s at the moment. However, they also have mentioned that there will be support for a music streaming service in the future. What music service is that? Not entirely sure yet. So I guess that's gonna be a to be determined. And on the sport profile end of things, both of these are very similar where they have quite a few different sport profiles to choose from with all the typical stuff that you'd expect like running both indoors and outdoors, including a trail run and track running profile, outdoor and indoor cycling profiles, pool swimming, as well as open water swimming, speed surfing, as well as windsurfing, rowing, triathlon, strength training, as well as some catch all profiles like a generic gym cardio profile and a GPS cardio profile for let's say something like soccer or tennis. And then they also have snow sports like skiing, snowboarding, cross country skiing, as well as ski touring. But one difference though is that the Apex 2 Pro has their multi-pitch activity profile for rock climbing. And I've actually got a video about how all that works, which is actually kind of neat. And I also have another video covering how their skiing and snowboarding activity profiles work, which is also kind of neat. And I'll have both of those videos linked down in the description below. 
And yet another thing new with the Apex 2 and Apex 2 Pro is that both of these get new GPS chipsets, where with the Apex 2, it has a new all systems GNSS chipset where it can leverage all five major satellite systems. And with the Apex 2 Pro, it can also leverage all five of those major satellite systems, but it also has a dual frequency mode where it can leverage two satellite frequencies at the same time. And where this dual frequency mode can be handy is in challenging environments where satellite signals can get a little bit iffy, like around really tall buildings where satellite signals can kind of bounce out of those objects, as well as in really dense tree cover or around really tall rock faces. But in regards to how accurate these watches actually are, let's go ahead and start out with some road biking. And this was kind of an easy test, mostly in the wide open. And the total distance lined up just fine between all the devices, as well as the corrected distance figure in Strava. So we're good to go there. And then taking a look at the finer detail of the GPS tracks on this ride, it's all very good stuff out of both of the watches. And I have the Apex 2 Pro in orange, and I have the standard Apex 2 in purple on all the following examples. On all the straight sections, both of them were right in line with the road, and there was no weird deviations or anything like that. And even on the curvy sections of the path right here good to go. Literally the only place I could find something that was barely a miss on this ride was right here while entering and exiting this small underpass. Both the Apex 2 and the Apex 2 Pro swept a little bit wide but so did the Wahoo Roam V2 but the Garmin Edge 830 and the Endura 2 were a bit more solid here. And then for an example for trail running we see that the distance was all pretty close to each other on all the devices with the exception of the Apex 2 without dual band. And then for the elevation gain again all within the same ballpark however all of them were a smidge higher than the corrected elevation figure in Strava but really not all that big a deal in the whole scheme of things. And if we take a close look at the GPS tracks, as I headed up the trail, things were looking pretty good out of all of them. And this is a super, super challenging environment for GPS. So if I switch over to satellite view, you can't really even see the trail. So on this upper section, as I was climbing, there's certainly some variances going on with all the devices, but for this sort of situation, none of them really failed miserably. As I started to head down though, this is where I saw some bigger differences where the Apex 2 without dual band was kind of skirting off the trail a bit, kind of like the Sutone 9 Peak Pro that's in dark blue. The bigger issue though that I saw was right up here where the Apex 2 had a bit more problems on this super tight section of trail. And then for an example for mountain biking, the distances were somewhat close between the Apex 2, the Apex 2 Pro, as well as the Sunto 9 Peak Pro, but a little short compared to the corrected distance in Strava, as well as the distance collected by the Enduro 2. In addition, the elevation gain was a little bit shy on both the Apex 2 Pro as well as the Apex 2, but in the whole scheme of things, not a great deal off. Now, in terms of that discrepancy that we saw with the distance on the Apex 2 Pro, if we take a close look at the GPS tracks, we can kind of get a clearer picture of what may have happened. Going up the road here, things were looking pretty good out of all of them, but as soon as I started climbing these switchbacks, the Apex 2 Pro started to wander a little bit. If we take a look at this upper loop here, here's where we can see that the Apex 2 Pro got a little bit off track like up here and then over here, which may explain that slight difference in distance. But then going down this trail here, things were looking pretty darn good out of all of them, except for maybe the Sunto 9 Peak Pro that's in dark blue. And by the way, I triple checked that I didn't have the fit files accidentally flipped around from the Apex 2 versus the Apex 2 Pro because the Apex 2 actually did a little bit better on that ride. But now let's check out a city run, and here's where we can see that the Apex 2 Pro was the same as the Sunto 9 Peak Pro for distance, but about a tenth of a mile short from the Enduro 2's native distance, as well as the corrected distance in Strava. And then the Apex 2 without dual band came up quite a bit short. And then for the GPS tracks, as I started out, we see that the Apex 2 kind of got a little bit excited here before I actually went over this overpass and then under this bridge. However, after exiting the bridge, the Apex 2 Pro got a little bit off course, and then over here, the standard Apex 2 cut in a little bit on this corner. As I ran along the creek, all of them were doing a pretty good job, although the Apex 2 was a little bit in the water. And then on this tight corner here, we see that the Enduro 2 and Sunto 9 Peak Pro got very close to what I actually ran versus the other devices. But now moving on to the super tall buildings of downtown Denver, this is where things started to get a bit more challenging for all the devices. So like here and here, we see both Apex 2 weren't all that awesome where the others were doing a pretty good job. However, over here, we see that the Enduro 2 swept quite a bit wide where the 955 kind of cut in and the Apex 2 Pro was probably the best, at least on this loop. And then as I finished up, we see that the standard Apex 2 was cutting a few corners here and there. So for GPS accuracy, I don't know, it was sort of a mixed bag where for the most part, I do see better accuracy from the Apex 2 Pro versus the Apex 2 without dual band, with exception for maybe that mountain bike ride where the Apex 2 Pro had a few issues. In the city, I'd say that the Apex 2 Pro most definitely outperformed the Apex 2, and in all fairness, even the Enduro 2 had a handful of issues in that sort of environment. All right, so now onto hardware accuracy, and both of these have the exact same sensor, so there's really not much difference between these two, and these new sensors along with that new skin detection sensor are supposed to get much better accuracy than the previous generation, so let's take a look at how they do. 
So let's start out with some indoor cycling, which I find to be a pretty easy test for wrist-based optical heart rate sensors. And basically this is exactly what I wanna see. It did have a little bit of a wobble right at the beginning of the ride, but that can happen with these types of sensors when you first start a workout. So really no big deal there. And then for the rest of the workout, that's some pretty good solid stuff. And then moving on to some running, definitely a few more wobbles here and there, but nothing super wild by any means, but definitely a lot better than what we see out of the Sunto 9 Peak Pro that's in dark blue. And then with road biking, this starts to introduce more variables like vibrations and bumps in the road, which can throw off these types of sensors. And the Apex 2 Pro did okay, but not necessarily exceptional. You can see that for the first half of the ride, things were pretty good for the most part, but then on the last portion of the ride, it got a little bit shaky up here, and then it had a couple places where the heart rate dropped out for a moment or two. Nothing too wild though, and overall, not a bad result out of the Apex 2 Pro. Oh, and then for another example, here's another ride with the standard Apex 2, and we see basically the same sort of results where overall not bad, but a little bit shaky in some spots, and some issues when picking up the rise in heart rate after stopping. And then for weight training, which is notoriously one of the hardest activities for a wrist-based optical heart rate sensor to track accurately due to all the varying arm movement and gripping, the Apex 2 Pro did an okay job here where it was pretty close to the external sensors I was wearing. It did have a little bit of trouble with these bicep curls here and was a little bit off with these tricep extensions, but for a watch, this is actually pretty good. And then for these high intensity intervals at the end, it also did a pretty decent job, but it did have sort of this odd dip right here at the end when I was cooling down. The Apex 2 and Apex 2 Pro also support Course's new Pod 2 accessory and this little thing can help you get better real-time pace as well as better distance accuracy for running indoors. The Apex 2 and Apex 2 Pro also have courses renamed Effort Pace Metric, which is at the moment basically just great adjusted pace, but don't worry, the Apex 2 and Apex 2 Pro also still collect running power from the wrist if you prefer to use that metric. Oh, and the Apex 2 and Apex 2 Pro also do have sleep tracking, and they both did just fine here in regards to tracking the time I went to bed, as well as when I woke up. So overall, the new Apex 2 and the Apex 2 Pro, these are nice updates to the originals, and arguably a very big update from the original Apex to the Apex 2, and probably a little bit less substantial of an upgrade from the original Apex Pro to the Apex 2 Pro. And then for price, the Apex 2 comes in at $399, and then the Apex 2 Pro comes in at $499. And if you look at the materials, like the sapphire and titanium, those prices are actually pretty darn good. But when you look at the feature sets, they may not be quite as comparable as some other watches in that same price range. But one thing that Chorus is very well known for is updating previous generation devices with a lot of new features in the future. And it will be really interesting to see what that music streaming service will be on these devices. But again, that's to be determined. Anyhow, if you have any questions about the new Apex 2 or the Apex 2 Pro that I didn't cover in this video, definitely leave those in the comment section down below. And on your way down there, if you found the information in this video to be useful, do me a favor and just quickly hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel for plenty more sports tech videos that are coming up soon. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.